Let's jump to the story. Yeah. I love this from the Wall Street Journal. Kamala Harris says she is ready to serve <laughs> as Biden faces age scrutiny. In a recent interview, the vice president cites her capacity to lead after uh, stops on her abortion rights tour. And the important thing to take away from this, this narrative has been going far and wide as if after the news report came out that Biden is too senile to be criminally charged. I'm being hyperbolic. Kamala Harris then said, I'm ready to serve. No, 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 no. She said this two days before the report came out. However, I can only assume she already knew what the report was going to say. Mm -hmm. Biden's lawyers had been briefed as to what was going on, going on well before any information got released. That's what they do. So she knew exactly what was happening. And this is indicative of her being like, "Ooh, oh boy, yeah. I hope <laughs> she's Biden doesn't make it. <laughs> well, she's on this like shadow campaign trail trying to test if like she could win back voters by focusing completely on what Democrat, you know, left wing media always says is going to be the number one issue this year, abortion rights. What if like, they're wrong? It's immigration. This maybe year. this is what she's been laughing about all this time, you know, for no reason. Like, a hyena. What, if, what if, you know, following this report that Joe Biden, his brain is too damaged to be prosecuted. Kamala just comes out and just drops the act and gives like the most articulate and commanding <laughs> speech of her life. Her polls just go skyrocket. With, like the patriarchy made me sound dumb so that I wouldn't upstage the man, the feminist. But she would say the fake news made it up. <laughs> and then what do you say to that? Like, well, I mean, they are fake news. Yeah. <laughs> she turns it around on everybody. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. She'd, she'd uh, really have to have quite a, an accelerated course in vocabulary and rhetoric and I, other topics. You know, I was saying uh, about six months ago, my prediction was Joe Biden will not be the nominee. He will not be the candidate. Something has to happen. And right now, the betting odds suggest that is likely the case. I mean, Biden is dropping precipitously. Michelle Obama is skyrocketing. People are starting to be like, I don't think Joe Biden's going to make it. Yeah. Like a prosecutor... A special counsel literally came out and said, this man has such bad memory, he doesn't know when he's vice, he, he, he doesn't remember when he was vice president. Or when his son died. Or, that's the scariest yeah. thing. He can't remember when his son died. Or, I mean, look, we, we often call him a liar when he's like, my son died in Iraq. Where everyone's like, he's lying. No, I think he's, you know, grandpa's confused. <laughs> right. He's trying to fill in gaps that his brain no longer has. I mean, yeah. that, that's actually extremely lie. sad, right? Yeah. I, I think of all these people who look at it and are like, this is elder abuse. I, I can't remember who, but yeah. there's some, there was some Nobody comedian who loves was like, Joe Biden. I would never let them treat my grandpa this way. Like, it's rough out Joe there. Joe Biden is the most cynical, uh, self-centered uh, opportunist there is. Yeah, he, uh, Joe Biden. Was. He was a cynical opportunist. Jill. 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 Oh, you said Jill was. Jill. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I will say this. Joe Biden was a crooked, yes. corrupt, spineless, evil man. And the reason I say was is because at a certain point when your brain is mushed. It's just a husk there now. Yeah. Know. It's like saying the uh, the mannequin in the corner of the room of Biden is a, is a, is, is a, is a criminal. It's like, well, uh, it's just kind of a hunk of plastic. You know what no, I mean? They, they, they love it, I think. I think there's like a Politburo running the country and they just stick them up there. It's perfect because they it's have weekend. total control. We can at Biden's. Yeah. We got yeah. this guy that it's also part of, I think, a ritual humiliation uh, plan to make us feel like, look, we could shove anybody down your throats and you'll you'll have to. He'll be a, he'll be your president. That's just the way it goes. Yeah, but I don't I don't know this time around. And, and I don't see how they can beat Trump short of like abject cheating to the I don't even know if that's <laughs> going to be as effective. I mean, the shadow campaign which they like universal mail and voting, all that stuff still in play, but it may just be overwhelming. I, I mean, things, the media keeps screaming in the faces of people that everything's fine. And it's mm -hmm. like, dude, you can't just say that. Yeah. People go to the grocery store. They can't buy bread. You're right. not convincing anybody. Talk of $7 for, for butter. Yeah. Oh, it got, it's so crazy. I was saying this before. We used to buy these little salamis, a little pack of salamis. And there's like, I don't know, maybe like 30 salamis in it. And it would cost like five bucks. Now it's 15. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, we would buy a bunch of them and put them downstairs in the green room for people to have snacks. You know, no sugar. That's why we do it. We keep the sugar to low, the protein high. And it's it's super expensive now. Okay. Everything Everything's going up. And you see these videos where people are talking about uh, young people. It's like there's one video where a woman's screaming because she's like, yo, I went and bought like eggs, some water and some vegetables. It was $41. <laughs> I, I have no idea what's going on. And they're saying like, don't worry, the economy is great. No, it isn't. Yeah.
And yet he's like, you know how I'll win back young voters? Get on TikTok. Like, these are all the same people who are trying to establish themselves financially, build their future, and they're looking at it every day saying, I can't save for anything. Did you see that map where it says it's now uh, more affordable to rent in most of the country than it is to buy a home? Like, wow. it's wild I, to I, me I, that there are, they're able to look voters in the eyes and say, everything is fine. Don't question see, us. You know, here's the trouble with you run as a libertarian. Yeah. You can't be a, you can't, uh, uh, you, you can't do things like this here. If I was running on the Republican ticket, I would come out and say, as president, we're going to take all the illegal immigrants <laughs> and we're going to kick them out and give those hotels to all Gen Z. Gen Z, you get free hotels, free beds, free TVs. <laughs> Basically, you know, you're Gen Z and you're looking at these videos where it's like for 2000 bucks a month, you can live in a five by 10 room with no bathroom and no closet. Then you're hearing in New York, they're giving hotel rooms to illegal immigrants. Yeah. I just straight up be like, we're going to flip that around. Gen Z, you vote for yep. me, and I'm going to bang the gavel and say you get the hotel rooms, and we'll put the illegal immigrants in the uh, in the in the five by eleven box. Yeah, better yet, we will just deport I, I them. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, libertarians <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> we'll yeah, steal your money. <laughs> there's a little bit of re yeah. I mean, basically, we have to run on. I run on principle, so yeah, I'm not going to steal something from somebody to give it to somebody else. <laughs> However, I do think that none of the other candidates, as far as I can tell are talking about the incentivization, the artificial incentivizing of immigration through social welfare. I yeah. mean, it's unbelievable. I uh, mean, it's more than that. It's the, it's, it's the practical uh, uh, incentivizing, where they offer them money before they even, even come. come. Yes. Yeah, and, and send NGOs to assist them. Yeah, this, is, this, is why I, this is why, again, I asked you earlier, and, and yeah. I think that the biggest problem the, the libertarians have is the entitlements. Like, yes. the biggest thing, the biggest obstacle to electing libertarians is the fact that they're not going to give anything away they're not going to try to buy votes and that's also one of the worst things for america it's the worst thing is, about democracy per uh, yeah absolutely people can you know they're voting to rob other people effectively that that's what they're doing and and the the elected officials are empowering yeah, it, yeah of course you know? they are. But, it's, but it's so much worse than just voting to rob people because the way i described it is like imagine you and you you, you live with a roommate just the two of you <laughs> And then one day there's a guy sleeping on the couch and you're like, whoa, I never agreed this guy's sleeping on the couch. And your roommate's like, oh, come on, dude. Just let him crash here for a little bit. He'll pitch in. And you go, okay, fine, whatever. The next day there's another guy sleeping on the couch and you're like, hey, I never agreed this guy could come. It's like, well, we both voted and we both voted he could stay. Yeah, two, that's Two right. against one, you exactly. lose. And you're mm -hmm. like, what? And then the next time another guy shows up and all three of them are like, three against one, you lose. You no longer live there. That's what's happening to this country. Yeah. They're not bringing, and, and, and Republicans get this wrong. They're not bringing in illegal immigrants to vote. They're bringing them in to create congressional seats and electoral college vote, uh, uh, electoral college uh, uh, votes for the presidency. They don't need them to vote. They just need them to be there for yep. the census. Camp. So, yeah, that's right. That's right. They need to, they need to fill out the uh, census so that, that's why the, the Democrats insisted that. Uh, you did not have to be a citizen to be in the census. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think maybe you need to, what you, what, what I would do is to get like three whiteboards instead of one, because you know how Millet had the one whiteboard with all the government departments. <laughs> no, 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 no. You need that one. Yeah. But then you also need one where it's like, you know, illegal immigration, uh, NGO funding, international funding. You basically need three whiteboards that is not just about but the state i agree yeah it's not just the departments it's also yeah. foreign funding foreign funding the ngos the globalist organizations that are pushing all DEI, of this you need like you need one for like all, the, all the cultural stuff you need one for foreign spending and one for domestic over like bloat and then you have to very calmly just <clears throat> afuera yeah <laughs> ah, there's some afuera. things you can't cut except that you have to get at them where they meet the state and that is to say there are all these globalist organizations that are pushing these agendas like these ngos and so forth and so you can't really you know, legally do anything to stop them all you can do is stop their effect i'm kind of at the point where i would just just want to press the off button like government off yeah Agreed. And just like, you know, see what happens for a little bit and let people Actually, scramble. Absolutely, that's my whole... Nothing happens. We do this every every <laughs> no. couple of years. They, they just turn off the government. And they say, it's, look, government, shut up. And everyone's like, okay. It's like, and... it's like they're secretly going, come on, figure it out. Yeah. Figure it out. We we turned it off again. When will you start figuring it out? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like the, the, and another, another, again, another problem that the libertarians have is there is a significant portion mm -hmm. of the workforce that is employed by the federal government yes um it's yeah you know, i don't know exactly how many people work for the federal government but it's you know got to be a few million 
Uh, that's and, why and, you have to attack it right away and, you know, and take out whole departments all at once mm-hmm. because this way you get you get rid of this. And so also there's just a lot of statist ideology everywhere. Yeah. Right? It's coming at you at all from all angles. Well, it's, People it's believe a drug. that the government, yeah, it's a drug. They believe the government is is needed, that it's necessary, that it's benefi- beneficent, that it's, you know, helpful and and it, it's our best friend. Whereas the opposite what, is the case. The, the more they create government jobs, they create dependencies. And then if you terminate these these uh, b- these departments and these programs, it leaves people without work. And the private sector does not have the space because of the, the state. <laughs> because of the state. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. It, it creates it's a gonna perpetual. Take time. There, will be t- there will be a lag where you'll have people definitely out of work that get cut from the state. And then it'll take time for the court, you know, for the capitalist economy, uh, the the, uh, the marketplace I, to I, pick up these people. Here's but, here's the challenge. I think the only actual solution is just a hard reset, but that would be make very very hard times. And the reason I say that is there are too many people who don't understand the concept of making like of producing value on their own. Mm-hmm. And I blame mostly the state for that and institutionalized learning facilities, schools, and the Department of Education. We need to get back to a, to a time where someone said to themselves, how can I create value for which I can trade in, in society? Because now what happens is you fire all these government employees, they're going to be like, I need a job. Yeah. No, you need to create value. Exactly. Value you can trade. I don't know how to do that. Well, part of the problem there, too, is government restricting people from being able to open businesses. Yes, the restrictions, but also, you know, the education, the indoctrination into statist ideology, into statist thinking into believing uh, that they can't do anything without the state and that the state is all good and all necessary. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.